I don't have any slides. I don't have any really real thing prepared. But this is called, do you like physics simulations and C++? The making of, because I've done a cool talk this morning about do you like physics simulations, and we can go quickly over the intro slide that was very, very cool, but with also a lot of work to create. There are around seven, seven yeah, close to a million particles, it's easier to say. Um, and it's a simulation that took over a couple of hours, of course, because my poor two-core uh, two CPU computer couldn't handle all of those particles, of course. So how did I do that? Well, um, uh, when I was creating this talk, I had all of my comments. I, I used a small bash script to get all of the comments out and uh, rebuild all of the uh, executables so that I can take this animation, make a GIF file out of it, and put it in my presentation. And yeah, see that the executable, the, the PowerPoint is almost a gigabyte size file because yeah, there's a lots of animations there. Uh, and if we go over like the big animation, yeah, there are 150 comets around there. And the, for the big animations, for the one million particles animation, um, this still works, but it's very very slow. It's making like one iteration. I need to move this every couple of seconds. So it's pretty slow, even on a 12 core computer. But in a couple of hours, we would have a very cool animation. So how do we create that cool animations? Well, with a little tool that's called screen to gif It's a free tool to create GIFs. If you want to capture, if you want to capture a screen, you can capture part of it. 30 frames a second is a little bit intense, so it's maybe more like one frame a second. And then press the record button. It records it, stops it. And you have an animation that looks like it was real time, but it was not real time <laughs> at all. Yeah, but the other ones were real time, uh, like the uh, first comet, which was just nothing, and the other comets uh, more in line like uh, 10,000 more particles. This one's cool, because there's a lot of particles moving around, and I can move them around. Do you want to move them around, Tim? <laughs> oh, it's all right. Um, uh, what the other cool things that I didn't have time to show this morning, um, 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 Lightning talks, where are you? Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, in between the, the testings, sometimes I had to verify if the function would work. So I removed everything from the particles, keep only like the, the grid cells. And these are just the grid cells, the, the, the densities of all the particles inside. And this was done when I was trying to compare the ranges to function compared to the for loop. Where's Tristan? Where's Tristan? You know, I need you to make it more performant, but it's almost the same in my application between the ranges, between the just basic for loop with all the ifs, because for me, it looks like it, it was going good. And, and finally, um, the ending credits of my uh, talk was uh, uh, all black particles, but they were slowly and slowly getting just more white. Uh, how I did that was just that every particle that was going to be white, they're less dense than the black particles. Each time they hit one, they leave a little mark on it. If I move a lot of the particles, you'll see that they slowly and slowly get more white. And during my um, presentation, they kept going on and on and on, getting, getting faster and faster. And that's pretty nice. So with that, you could create your own PowerPoint presentation at an international conference and Cool while doing it. Thank you. <laughs>